Hello, everybody. My name is Julian, and I want to welcome you to my channel. For the last number of years, I've worked as a coach development learning facilitator in the province of Ontario, helping train new and existing sailing coaches to up their certifications and become more effective instructors. This video is a screen capture of a webinar that I gave in the spring of 2020 as part of our online delivery of instructor development materials. Most of the information presented in this video has already been seen in other videos on my channel, but I thought that there might still be some interest in this updated video. If you have any questions about the content, please feel free to put them in the comments below. About sail trim and sail controls, and those of you who are in my fundamental course saw this presentation because I was building it uh, while I was teaching you that course. Um, our objective here is to reinforce the proper use of ticklers and telltales to review the effects of various sail shapes, controls, sail performance, yada, yada, yada. So if you have a sail without ticklers, you need to put ticklers on your sail. And I mean that like if you own the sail and you're sailing the boat, you need to do that. But I also mean that in like the most basic like you're working at a yacht club and your kids don't have ticklers on their sail, you need to put ticklers on their sail. Okay, you can use yarn, strips of an old spinnaker or flag. You can buy telltale material. You can order it probably on Amazon and it'll come to your, your cottage if you live up north and there's no chandlery nearby. Like there's almost no excuse these days for not doing it. And honestly, if you just have to pull like yarn out of an old sweater, um, Please put ticklers on your sail. So um, the luff ticklers go here. They go a couple of hands back from the luff of the sail, literally like two or three hands backwards. And we want to space them vertically up the sail so that we can see how the sail is trimmed in multiple positions. The leech telltales are a little bit less important, but they're, I mean, they're super important, but they seem to be less emphasized in the can sail standards. So, um, you could get away with one or two and not four of them, but uh, definitely you want to be attaching those in and around where the battens are uh, on the mainsail. That gives you an idea of how high you want to put them. And you want to put one probably near the middle of the leech of the jib. So when we're reading the ticklers, it's super useful to uh, imagine a sail from the top down with ticklers streaming either straight back or maybe flying away from the sail. So sail A in this case is undersheeted and the boat is pinching or the boat is pinching. Sail B is trimmed well and we can tell because the ticklers are streaming straight back. Sail C has the red tickler streaming away from the sail. So it's oversheeted or the boat is footing. This is a pair deck exercise for you. Okay, so for those of you who have responded, uh, most are saying that we're footing, some are saying that we're pinching. So uh, let's find out. So in the image on the left, the red tickler is flying erratically. The red tickler is the leeward tickler. And so when the leeward tickler is flying away from the sail, that means that either the sail is over trimmed or the boat is footing. So and so to correct this, we could either head up or we could let our sail out, depending on whether we're trying to sail upwind or whether we're trying to sail to a point. This is probably the same question. So basically, the answer is to ease the sail or head up. So now we want to talk about sail shape. And one uh, set of words that we hear tossed around are full and flat. So fullness of a sail refers to the overall depth of the sail. Sometimes this is also referred to as the draft depth of the sail. Generally speaking, a fuller sail generates more power but points poorly. And a flatter sail or a shallower sail generates less power but points higher or better. So the question for those of you in Pear Deck is which of these two sail shapes would you want if you're sailing upwind in flat water? So Matthew, you answered sail B. Can you tell us why? Um, you're looking more for pointing and you don't need as much power to get over the waves. So I said B. Excellent, that was very well put. So the correct answer here, in my opinion, would be that we want the flatter sail. 
Which of these sails would we want if we were sailing in medium wind and waves? Okay, everybody here says sail A. Can I get a piece to tell me why? Because you'll have more power and you'll be able to get through the waves without using it. Okay. And so the implication here being, I think, that because it's medium wind, we're not overpowered yet. Um, which of these would you want if you're sailing in heavy wind? Uh, so the answer that I'm getting for most of you is that you want the flatter sail. But I do see that um, a few of you want the deep sail in heavy wind. I'm wondering if you want to justify your, your ideas or if you um, maybe you're just guessing and you don't want to. Are you necessarily overpowered? I guess you're not necessarily overpowered, but um, there is sort of a strong implication because if you consider it to be heavy wind, the, the like the connotation of the word heavy is that like you're already out there hiking all the way and you're having trouble balancing the boat or whatever. But maybe if I if I changed it to say that it was survival conditions, would that make it more clear? Like, if, if you're out there in 25 knots, chances are, no matter how big of a guy you are, you need to be depowering your sail. Um, and so, because of that, you would want probably a flatter sail. So, the next topic that we're going to talk about is sail twist. So, sail twist refers to a change in shape as we move up the sail from bottom to top. Generally speaking, we decrease twist to power up, and we increase twist to depower. Um, and we open the leech in light air as well to encourage airflow. So that's a, like a separate thing that we do, but it's also related to twist. We have an animation here that should show you from the back and also from below the boom what sail twist looks like. So when we have lots of sail twists, we see that the leech is open, sort of falls off to the left. And when we have not very much sail twist, we see that the leech is pretty much straight up and down. And that the angle of the sail at the bottom is close to the same as the angle of the sail at the top. So I'll just let you watch a couple of cycles of this to drink in what sail twist really is and what it looks like. The view from the back is something that you need to get comfortable with looking at from the coach boat. Um, and the view from under the boom is something that you might have seen depending on how, how engaged you were as a sailor. You might have noticed this. Okay. So question for you all. But which of the following can be used to control sail twist? The outhaul, the Cunningham, the boom bang, the main sheet, both the outhaul and the Cunningham, both the boom bang and the main sheet. Oh. If you return to the, um, the go to meeting, you'll see that there's quite an interesting spread here. So, um, e and F are tied right now, which is kind of cool, but um, one of those answers is right and the other one's wrong. So let's take a look. So here we can see that I've marked the outhaul and the Cunningham as not being major effects of sail twist and the boom bang in the main sheet as having major effects on sail twist. How can I explain that better? Let's say that the main sheet and the boom bang both pull down on the boom. The outhaul and the Cunningham, neither of them pull down on the boom. If we go back to this animation here, what I want you to imagine is that as the sail is twisting, the boom is lifting. And as the sail is becoming untwisted and the leech is closing, the boom is being pulled down by either the boom vang or the main sheet or some combination of the two. Does that make sense to you guys? Can you say that again? Sorry. So sail controls that affect the up and down position of the boom affect the twist of the mainsail. The main sheet pulls down on the boom when you sheet it in tight. The boom bang pulls down on the boom when you pull it on. So if you want to affect the twist of your mainsail, those two sail controls work very well to do that. If we want to increase the twist, we let the boom lift. If we want to decrease the twist, we pull the boom down. I don't know if that helped, but. Yeah, I did, thank you. Okay, super, super effective thing to do if you find yourself near a rigged sailboat is to loosen off all of the sail controls 
including the boom bang and the main sheet, and then go stand behind the boat and grab the boom and push it up in the air and look at what it does to the sail, and then pull it down and uh, look at what it does to the sail. Okay, and you should see something very similar to this animation. So let's talk about the effects of various controls. And I will tell you that, in my opinion, knowing which corner of the sail a control pulls on is not enough. And what that really means is just knowing where you rig the outhaul or where you rig the Cunningham is a good first step, but it really doesn't have anything to do with understanding how to use that sail control unless you can visualize the shape. So what I'd like you to do for me, please, is draw in the box provided what you think the sail would look like with the Cunningham eased and the Cunningham pulled on tight. And th this is a 2D drawing, so we're drawing it sort of from the top down. And I've given you a picture of the Cunningham on the right. And I think instead of looking at your answers, I I'll just show you mine and talk about them. Okay? Because I'm seeing quite a mix here um, where some of you have the absolute right idea, and I think some of you might just be a little bit lost. So, um, if I hide the responses, here I've drawn my answer. What we can see is that with the Cunningham eased, we have kind of a fuller sail, and all of the shape in the sail is farther back in the sail. Okay? When we pull the Cunningham on tight, the sail gets flatter, and also the shape of the sail moves to the front of the sail where it's flatter at the back and it's more curved at the front. So the effect of the Cunningham, what we can think of the effect of the Cunningham is that it flattens the sail and also maybe more importantly, it pulls the draft of the sail, the depth of the sail forwards in the sail, controlling the shape. And I should say as well that that is a desirable characteristic of a sail when you're going upwind. Uh, could you draw for me, similar to what I just drew there for the Cunningham, you draw for me what the outhaul does to the sail? So I'm flipping through your answers and they all look pretty much right. So I'll just show you mine and I'll highlight what I did here that's a little bit different from what maybe some of you were doing. Okay, so with the outhaul eased, again, we have like a C-shaped sail. There's not a lot of controlled shape in it. When we pull the outhaul on, the location of the draft doesn't move very much forward and backwards. Okay, so like the, the main amount of depth in the sail is still in the middle of the sail. But when we pull the outhaul on, the actual length of the sail from front to back gets longer because we just pulled that corner of the sail uh, out on the sail, right? That's what the outhaul does. So the sail gets flatter near the bottom of the sail as we pull the outhaul on. The point of maximum draft moves up in the sail. We can't see this in the picture, but that's true. Okay. And lastly, the leech and foot can be stretched tight if the outhaul is over tightened. But that's not typically what we use the outhaul for. That's just something that you can keep in mind. If you see that the leech is super, super, super tight and the sail's not hoisted all the way, or if you see that the foot is super, super, super tight and it's making like a, a ripple in the bottom of the sail, like a wrinkle in the bottom of the sail, um, that might be an indicator that the outhaul is on, on too tight, okay? So the last two diagrams that I asked you to draw were top-down views of the sail. Now I'd like you to draw for me a, a rear view of the sail, drawing the leech profile that you would expect if the boom vang is on or if the boom vang is off. And uh, for those of you who are paying close attention, you might notice that when the vang is off, if you look at the tip of the boom in that picture, it's a little bit higher than the tip of the boom when the vang is on. So uh, Sebastian's got it right, Connell's got it right, Colin's got it right. Basically, you guys are nailing this. Um, I'm not having a lot of trouble with what you're drawing at all. So um, let me show you my answer. Okay, I wasn't expecting you to come up with exactly this because the drawing tools in Pear Deck are not exactly able to produce this. But what we see is when the vang is on just right, the leech stands straight up and down and the battens of the sail are kind of look parallel to one another. And when the vang is off and we let the sail twist up, then the leech looks open at the top. 
but it actually still looks closed at the bottom. And that's what our leach profile looks like, what the twist of the sail looks like as we adjust the boom. Um, the last thing that we're going to do is discuss mast bend. The boom vane causes mast bend, as you can see on the left. And so you have to kind of squint at this diagram, but on the left, the dotted line is showing the mast, okay? So when we pull the boom vane on, the boom pulls down on the clue of the sail, and that tightens the leech. And so the leech is tight, and it transfers the force up to the head of the mast, and it pulls the head of the mast backwards, okay? So the head of the mast is pulled backwards, and at the exact same time, the boom bang is pushing the boom hard into the front of, uh, like into the back of the mast. So the boom pushes forwards at the gooseneck, bending the lower section of the mast. And what we see then is that the mast takes on a bend characteristic as we tighten the boom bang. The more we put the boom bang on, the more the mast bends. So the effect that mast bend has on sail shape is that as you bend the mast, the sail gets flatter. Okay, so try to memorize that. The more you bend the mast, the flatter the sail gets at the front. So putting the boom bang on flattens your sail. Um, are there any other sail controls that you can think of that affect mast bend? If you have a traveler. Yeah, okay, how are you going to use the traveler to affect mast bend? Well, it's tighter and the mast comes back a bit. And if you let it off, the mast has tension let off. That's only for really high tension rigs, though. So, yeah, no, um, I like to think about bridles and travelers as having uh, like a strong influence on your sail twist. And that's true. And so, you know, that's not part of this lesson, but that's true. Um, I think that it's, it's correct to think of the traveler maybe as having some effect, but only in combination with the main sheet. Okay, and the main sheet is going to be what's actually causing that mass bend. Like regardless of the traveler position, if you have a loose, like if you ease the sail, the bend goes away. But if you sheet your main sail in really tight, like in a laser, we would call that like maybe block to block where like the, they're touching. And if the traveler is low, uh, then we would definitely be putting some mass bend on there. Okay. Um, if you sail a boat with a backstay, that can also induce mass bend. There's also another very interesting and super important way that we cause mast bend in most of our double-handed dinghies, um, like less so with the 420 just because of how stiff the mast is. But like if you have ever sailed an international 420 or a 29er or any other high performance boat, um, what is the main thing that we do to affect mass bend? The amount of tension that you put on your rig affects the amount of mass bend. Okay, so in, in sailboats, normally that comes down to the force day tension, which we measure with a tension gauge, and we adjust it by changing the shroud adjusters. Like we, we change the pin height on our, our shroud adjusters at the chain plate. But, um, it has less to do with how long the shrouds are and more to do with how much tension we have, okay? So the more tension you put on your rig, the more mast bend you have. What does that do to our sail shape? Flattens. Thank you, again, it flattens. So the more we bend our mast, the flatter our mainsail gets. And that's the, like, the only takeaway from this slide that I'd like you to have is as we bend our mast, our mainsail gets flatter. But then you can also kind of think about how do we bend our mast, okay? And there's a number of ways, and it always depends on your boat. But um, that's why in high winds, we put more tension on. That's why in high winds, we put more boom bang on. It's because it flattens the sail, which gives us a little bit less power, but lets us point better, which is something that we want in heavy wind, especially when we're overpowered. Okay, so uh, that concludes my chat about sail controls and thank you very much for your